Okay, so I'm starting kind of just like, I don't even know where I'm going with this. Uh, one thing I want to say though, because this was really kind of cool, is, um, so I was, uh, you know, just scrolling and uh, this was the other day. And whatever my conversation was with my guides, I think it was um, yesterday they gave me a really, really cool one. But um, the day before, I can't remember. But anyways, it was some conversation. And um, as I was scrolling, all of a sudden I came to this picture. And this woman was showing this um, beautiful rose. And she said that, um, I feel like I got black all over my eyes. She said that she was... Um, out in her garden and yesterday the rose was totally closed up and this morning she came out and it was totally open it totally had bloomed and you know i'm doing all these pictures with the flowers and the the blooming of life the the life of um nature you know like like i can totally get what i'm seeing in the pictures and um like I'm sharing my perspective of something I see, whether somebody sees what I see when I share my perspective, you know, that's up to the viewer. But anyways, I know what I see. And so when I, um, you know, when she was talking about this, uh, you know, to don't forget things can happen overnight. You know, a flower can go from a bud into a beautiful rose overnight. And so she was doing this whole thing. And I was like, yeah, that is so cool. And it just, it had so much meaning. And it was going like this. So I took a picture of the rose. And then I, you know, zoomed in to the part that I wanted. The part that all the life is coming out of. And so I um, took a picture. And I've been painting that one. And it is, the color of the rose was... Um, it was so orange. It was, uh, it was really beautiful. I said, I've got the picture. And, um, so I've been spending a lot of time, you know, go over this color, go over this color. I'm not going to be able to match the color. I mean, to match, I'm not that good. <laughs> like uh, Matching all these colors of nature. Nature is fantastic. And so, um, but anyways, I'm really, really liking it. And I has been kind of stuck because it is kind of like when I'll look at the flower, I'll look at the thing. It's like you just, something will jump out at you just like that one did. And so that has been with all of the other ones. Something had jumped out at me. And so that's number 13, I think. I have two more uh, canvases. And I could go more in this series. I don't know. We'll see. But, you know, I go still work on this one. None of them are signed yet. None of them are where I've gone like, okay, I'm done. I'm ready to sign. But all of them I really love. So I don't know that I'm going to go in and mess with any of them. Because one thing I do like to do is I like to set them up and look at them and look at them. <laughs> and, um, but the, um, Anyways, in the series, I may, you know, it depends on what something jumps out, out at me, I, you know. And so I may keep going with it or whatever, you know, um, and do some more. I may just keep doing a bunch more. I'm really, I don't know. There's something that's really standing out to me about the whole thing. So um, anyways, I was really enjoying that. And, uh, but, oh my gosh, it is such a distraction when Stella is so uh, doing bad. Like, and she's doing so bad. I told, I a hundred percent never, ever would I judge somebody for, uh, taking matters in their own hand when they have a dog that is in pain. Like, yeah, I, I can't judge somebody for that. Uh, even when I, the other day after I said that I wouldn't do that, it was like, it comes in 10 times harder. This is how life has always shown me. It, to not judge, <laughs> like, don't ever judge anything, because they will come in and show you, really, is that where you stand on this, it's like, no, I don't, please stop, so, uh, yeah, I'm not, I'm not taking a stand on that, like, you know, anybody, you know, I get it, when it feels like it's time to go, it's time to go, it's just my, with what they have given me, and shown, with what my information that I have right now, I'm, more uncomfortable taking matters into my own hands than, um, you know, having somebody whine and cry at me all day long. And it's a fucking fine line, I'll tell you. And if it were to the point 
where nothing was making her happy and she was refusing to eat and uh, not even excited about a treat. I mean, she still gets so excited about stuff. I mean, she's got that tail going all the time. She's always so happy and excited. It is just the, um, I think it is just the same as like for all old people. Like you lay there and all of your cartilage and shit is just as worn down on your bones and your hips and stuff. And it is uh, super painful. And then plus her hip sockets don't fit proper. So she has a lot of rubbing. And so I uh, keep doing natural stuff and just keep on, you know, hoping that she's here. You know, she's gone this far into it. And, you know, and I honestly, I don't know what access they're even going to give us when it comes to the healing of pets. Like, I think that they would respect the, you know, to a lot of us, our pets are our family, our child, you know, it's not just a dog. Like, I just saw this video that was fucking heartbreaking. This dog that is tied outside. And when I talked about dogs being tied outside, people come in and comments, oh, that's illegal. You can't do that. Well, it's everywhere. So the cops don't care. And so this one, these people had this dog tied out in their yard, way off from their house, over by the uh, uh, sidewalk. And so people were interacting with this dog. And this girl started interacting with it all the time and feeding it and stuff like that. And she turned them in and they came out and they said, no, that's okay. You can leave your dog tied out as long as there's a dog house. As long as they have shelter, you can leave them tied out in your yard all day long, all night long. And this dog was out there for a year that this girl was going and feeding it. It had, it was, dog was five years old, apparently had been out there his whole life. And so finally she did get to get the dog and got to take it to her house and bring it indoors. And it is just the cutest thing, but God damn, I cannot believe how people just, that is a fucking soul that you are out there controlling that you've tied to a fucking tree and decided that's all the life it gets to have. There's a, there's a karmic debt. Like people don't fucking get, like, I don't. It's very frustrating to understand some of this stuff and people to just be so idiotic. Like that is a uh, karmic debt. That is taking things out of balance to take something's freedom away like that for your own benefit, your own need. Like, I don't know what this person's deal was, like why they needed to have this dog tied to a tree outside for fucking five years. I don't know. You know, what's their motivation? Does it give them peace because they're so scared fear is another one that will get you out of balance and so you know i don't know what their motivation is i don't know that their intentions but whatever it is your stuff you know you know inside of you that's why you can't hide from you that's why the real judge is inside of you because you are in there you know what your intention is you can't hide you can't lie to yourself and so when faced with the truth, you have to see the truth. And so at some point, you know, everybody will have to see the the other side. Just like I said, when I sit there and I say like, oh, I will not put her to, oh, I cannot make that choice. Oh, no way. And then immediately it's just like, really? <laughs> really? So it's like, let's see, how far can we push you on this? You know, and that is, um, you know, it, to me, it's been beneficial. Like, I, I knew that from the time I was, like, 20. I was constantly, constantly. Well, once I picked up on that little nugget, I was like, ooh, anytime somebody, be, don't judge somebody, don't judge, don't judge. You're going to find out. You're going to feel it. You're going to live it. As soon as you judge something, it's going to come in to show you. That's my life experience, you know. I, I mean... I think there's a lot of people who judge a lot of shit and they don't, they just keep in their judgment ways. They aren't to that part yet. I, I know. I mean, I, my relationship is, uh, my relationship with the spiritual side has been different my whole life than most people. So anyways, I don't know. But to me, I definitely see if you're going to go in and you're going to be judgmental on something, they're going to come in and show you, is that really how you want to stand on this? So, um, because there's no judgment on anything. Everything is a go by the moment. You're in the moment, you decide. Even um, 
the other day I went up to the food bank going to get her some meat and yesterday. And so I was, um, uh, you know, I was sitting there thinking, well, I'm just going to get meat. I'm just going to run in there. I'm just going to get some meat. I'm just going to run up there. I'm just going to run in and get some meat. And then, you know, and I had to go get the water and I had to go send a package. So I, um, uh, went up there and at first the, I was like a car pulling in and the parking lot seemed full. And I was like, ah, oh, fuck, man, I'll just go get water first. And so I pulled down and it looked like, well, it doesn't look very crowded. So I walked up and it was just like 10 or 15 people in line. It was raining, so nobody was standing there. And so I just went ahead and waited. And while I was waiting, then it was like, and I saw these people bringing all this stuff out. And then it was very much like, see, this is why you don't just set an expectation. You be in the moment. You don't just go, oh, I'm just doing this. I'm just doing that. I'm only going to get this. No, you go in and you be in the moment. You go in and you see, what do you need? Do you need this? Do you need that? Don't don't always do yourself on limitations. So anyways, that was something that they were showing me yesterday. Another one that was really good yesterday that they showed me, this one just knocked me right into tears because I... um I'll get so frustrated over this Groundhog Day situation where I feel like every day I'm just living the same fucking day over and over for a fucking long ass time. And so I'll be just like, and I told y'all, I'll sit there and ah to my fucking guides and my uh, I'll bitch and cuss and yell and stomp and everything else. And uh, so yesterday they, um, I was in there, I was like folding some clothes, still was walking around wine and following me from room to room. I got to get every wine. And uh, so I'm just like, oh my God, it is it, I mean, you know, I want, I'm so fucking ready. I'm so fucking ready for change. And, um, uh, you know, when there was the whole conversation going and uh, but the what they came back with was uh what if it, this was the last day your last day to ever live the way you're living there would be no other day past this day that you're living the way you're living and all of a sudden i was just like you know i saw the freedom of uh being alone and isolated and the joy of being able to have another day with Stella. And, um, you know, all of a sudden, all of these things started coming in, like I said, and I just burst into tears because all of a sudden, when you think about, what if you didn't have this ever again? What if you didn't have this ever again? And it gave me a new perspective. And it made me cry, but not out of anger, or being sad, out of appreciation of like, and of, you know, not always being appreciative uh, and aware of what you have at this moment because you're thinking about the next moment and what you want. Creating expectation and, uh, you know, focusing on something that's up there. And, and you know, and in my case, uh, you know, this has been a part of my journey, a part of the, the struggle, a part of what they've been teaching me. Because, you know, like in 11, 17, 17, uh, when I got triggered and this person started, uh, you know, I thought that they were uh, talking to me directly. It was, it was weird. And um, in the things that they were saying and stuff, it was like, because they were speaking to my soul. I, and they've done it so many times and they don't even have any awareness of it. Like when my soul does, <laughs> Soul's always telling me, like, did you hear that? I was like, what did they mean? <laughs> um, but, you know, when that started, you know, immediately I wanted to control things. I was like, you know, I got to talk to this person. And um, this whole side of me that needed to be purged out came in as side of me that was like, you know, that wants to control things, that wants to change things and stuff. And when they told me that, um, you know, about the, you know, if this was the last day and stuff, all of a sudden, um, two, uh, something else just popped in my head. Oh, man, that is so crazy. Maybe I'm not supposed to say that part. Um, but when they, um, when I, um, when they had said that, and then I started looking at things, being more appreciative of the day. 
And, you know, how would I spend this day if it was my last, last day to spend it, you know, in any way. And on the way back to all of a sudden, I was like, I think I want to stop and get some cheese. And I was right next to the last gas station. So I was like, okay, well, since that crossed my mind, I'm really trying to uh, do better on that too. Like that is something that they have showed me and showed me and showed me. Oh yeah. Cause I was talking about the trigger thing. Okay. So when, um, uh, one of the things that they had showed me, this is where they started teaching me so much about destiny and divine timing and how everything is going to happen the way that it happens. Oh yeah. Cause it was when they were telling me that, you know, yesterday about this being the last day, I really did have a whole breakdown to them. And I was just like, you know, how I am sorry when I come across as being so uh, not great. I have appreciated every moment here, even if I've stomped around on a lot of them, uh, that how much that I have discovered about myself, the relationship that I have been able to understand in myself, with myself, of who and what I am, and everything about me that I know up until this point, you know, so much of it has been through this um, cocoon time and this isolation like this. And so it has, um, you know, transformed me. And so, you know, that was a part of the conversation with them when I was talking too. was like, you know, I really do appreciate this time. I really do understand about divine timing. I really do understand when I'm in this is because it's something that is beneficial for me you know it's that one painting that I had to paint it was that one thing that I had to say to that person before everything changed you know you just don't know what it is that it is the precursor the domino that's going to hit right before everything changes and so you know and it's hard when you have an understanding and knowing of that it is like I you know I want to watch every domino like oh it's about to be oh is it you know, and I, and I know it's not something I can watch. It's something that I need to let go of. It's something I need to just allow to happen as its own time. So uh, there's been so much stuff that, you know, were ideas or concepts or something that they've really taught me about how something works and what it really means. And, you know, I've learned, I've just learned so much spiritually in this, um, this time and that's why I'm always telling people, you know, everybody should take this time to themselves. To me, it is exactly like uh, the tribes, you know, put you out into, or the Vikings, put you out into the forest by yourself for a year and see if you come back. <laughs> like, if you come back, you come back a man. If you don't come back, well, we're a little weak. So, um, anyways, that's what it feels like is this time turned me into an adult, somebody who is a different perspective, a different point of view than a child. And I'll tell you with the children, like this is getting crazy. So, um, you know, I, it is so, uh, mind boggling. So one of the things was, so yesterday this, uh, guy came in and he had a real account and I went on a look and stuff and he, um, you know, as a young progressive guy. And so he came in and started telling me, um, I don't remember which video I've done so many response videos now at this point. I don't even remember, but, um, one of them, he came in and told me that it was, uh, biases are the problem. People with their biases are the ones that, um, can't accept others and all this stuff. And so then I was like, absolutely. As, <laughs> yeah, that is the problem. And I said another thing. Um, I think he had said a couple of comments. I knew he was, um, you know, angry, uh, rebellious, uh, progressive. But, um, uh, you know, I thought we had kind of come to some sort of, uh, uh, you know, like I did with the other boy who had come in and said, you know, that he wishes there would have been drag queens around when he was little, so he wouldn't have felt so alone. And um, and then we had a, you know, reasonable conversation, and I think I gave him some, 
You know, all you need is some added perspective. You don't have to go to the other side. You don't have to believe what these people say. It's just a seed. It's just so you have more reference. So when you look at a situation, you have more details in order for you to make a decision. So your decision can be more accurate, possibly, than like what we're watching where these people are making decisions over only having half the information. Stella, I'm doing this, honey. Come and lay down. I know you're not comfortable. You're not going to be comfortable out there either. Just come and lay down, please, and let me finish. I know you're not comfortable, honey. She wants to go outside and then inside, outside, inside, outside, inside. She just can't get comfortable and it sucks, man. This is this is one of the most challenging things I've ever gone through. Because I because of feeling is so strong about like it's not up to me, but they gave us this option. But in the natural order of things, it's not up to me to decide when her life is to go. There's set contracts. And I don't want to be the one who, you know, it's just like, fuck, I don't want to be that. I feel like I got boogers ain't on my nose, so if I do, it's, it's so fucking, this weather is shit. Um, anyways, so the, um, uh, so these kids, so um, that one, um, when I thought, you know, that we had this, uh, not a bonding moment, but at least, uh, something we could agree on that, um, that would, you know, he would be like, oh, yeah, you know, no, he blocked me. The moment he saw we agreed on something, he blocked me. And I, I was like, it, it kind of shocked me. I was like, did the algorithm just do that so that they're trying to keep us divided? Like, it was really like, what the hell is going on here? And I even did a video like, you know, uh, I don't know if the algorithm is uh, trying to keep us divided or if you know, uh, this kid saw that we agreed on something and blocked me immediately and everybody was coming in. No, that's blocked. When somebody just disappears immediately, they blocked you. And I was like, oh my gosh. So uh, I block people all the time that are coming in and are just hateful. They got nothing to offer. But when somebody can actually have a reasonable conversation and isn't just a total dick, even if they say kind of dickhead things and stuff I still am not gonna just be like you know uh, you know it's the people who just come in and just have nothing to offer but put downs and ridicule and one thing I noticed is that how many people were coming in oh my god I'm on the wrong side of TikTok so the algorithm the universe or whatever see they're gonna push it on these people to have to hear the other side to have to see because the universe is trying to give them more vision as much as they want to fight it. And they don't realize that you get more vision by receiving others' perspectives. And they're so rigid and they're so stuck and they don't want, you know, they don't want anything rational or reasonable. They just want to, because it's, it's absolutely insane. Like, I can't even, it's so funny too how these people who, you know, I've got such raw feelings, like don't say anything that could hurt their feelings, but they'll just come in, but guns a blazing, look you old, you know, they, they got to come up with something to just ridicule you and put you in your place. So you shut up. And I guess apparently anybody who is older than them, then if you're old, you, you're just old, you know, you've got no value to them. Another thing that they are not seeing, like you're the issue. You're, you're not valuing other humans. You are deciding, uh, you know, who's right and who's wrong and stuff like that. And in the, one of the big mistakes I think the science has made is that you took your own thing. You took biology and now you're trying to pretend like it doesn't exist. It's your own uh, thing. Like, how do you turn around and say, you know, biology is this. And then all of a sudden turn around to a whole generation and say, biology doesn't exist. We just made it up. It's like, you know, it's like the same thing with this bullshit with the flat earth and shit. Like this is mental, the, the stuff that they do. So anyways, I, I have got so many freaking, and I've seen other videos. This isn't just in my comments. Like I saw a video, this guy looks like a wackadoo, like, Dude, you don't even know how wacky you look. He's got 
a uh, couple of colored hair. And now I've seen other kids that aren't the, you know, I, I, I don't know, straight goth kids or something. That so many of these um, progressives have taken over, like, their style with their colored hair or something. Because this kid was like, I will never do my hair blue again. Can't believe they've come in and taken over the blue hair. Like, because <laughs> he doesn't want to be associated with that group of people. And apparently blue hair is a badge of honor in this progressive community. I don't know. I mean, I, I don't know. I think that's part of the problem is that they're fucking coloring the fuck out of their hair. You need your antenna. <laughs> Just burning them off. And uh, so, um, but they actually, like this guy he did a whole fucking video. It's been shared and shared and shared. I'm sure it's going to go viral because he's just so uh, out there looking and, um, you know, it, it is so crazy, too, is how many of these people who are so androgynous looking get so upset if they're misgendered. It's like, dude, why? If gender doesn't motherfucking matter, then why the fuck do you care what somebody calls you? Like, it makes no sense. But they will lose their goddamn mind if you misgender them. Like, oh, my God, what a topic of conversation. They could talk all day long. Oh, my God, and I was misgendered today. I walked in there. I put my things on the table. I put my purse down. I did this, and I was misgendered. Misgendered? It's like, you guys have people so confused, like, and I think some people, when an androgynous person walks up, they shut down. It's like, fuck, if I say the wrong thing, I'm going to be attacked. Like, does this person have fucking um, pepper spray in their purse? Like, they're going to go up and whack me with whatever, you know, it's like mental out there. And, um, but this guy goes through a whole thing. Like, I had already said, these kids are coming in and telling me that there's no such thing as biology. And then I had other people, oh, no, they, they haven't gone that far. They're not saying there's no such thing as biology. I'm like, well, they most certainly are. They're coming in and telling me that there's no such thing as biology and I'm just old. Let go of the old-fashioned ways, lady. There's no biology and uh, that, that's something y'all made up because you're so desperate to be gendered. <laughs> what the fuck? None of us are changing our fucking body parts to be to be regendered. Like, gender is a lot more important to you than it is to any of us. We're just like, hey, yeah, I'm a boy. Yeah, I'm a girl. Yeah, that's it. Y'all are the ones that are having so many issues. And this guy goes through, and um, I think he may have said, you know, uh, he may be talking from a soul's perspective, but he's not counting his soul in or something. You know, like, we are not, uh, you know, I mean, because literally your soul has no gender. Your soul is, uh, um, it's just energy. It's just, you know, light. And so it has no gender. You come into the experience to have a gender for multiple reasons. And so it has so many reasons that you come in to play the part you play. And uh, But these people, they want to be like, because there's a part of them that, you know, the soul part of them that tells them, hey, you're not any of these things. But then they are so stuck on not having a soul. It's like there's so fucking much mass confusion in these people's minds. It's crazy. And my thing is, is somebody's going to be held responsible for this. Like, this is that you, I don't think you can turn around and blame this one on the boomers. Sorry. Probably not even the Gen Xers. Like, this is, uh, like, I don't know. And just imagine how much worse it was going to get once these people, and these people wouldn't even be able to have kids naturally. They would be having kids through the fucking um, labs and shit. And, uh, you know, these people's attitude, I mean, they probably think the Dalai Lama's doing no harm, like, no big deal. It's like, dude, if he's doing that in front of people and they're clapping, what the fuck do you think he does behind the goddamn door? I mean, when I had heard about yesterday about the llamas were so violent and their whole mountaintop or whatever, the whole city, that they were so violent and they were so, um, 
you know, that uh, when the people went to go and talk to him that they had seen, you know, nobody had eyeballs, everybody's hands are cut off and shit. And so, you know, I, I'm not surprised. Um, uh, I'm just, it just it, is so funny that that when it came into my head so strong about that in uh, more violent times, we just ripped that fucking tongue right out of your throat. Is I really feel like it was, um, you know, that energy of all of the hands being all of those um, beings, you know, they're, they're coming back for a uh, full circle. That's what people don't get. We're going full circle on this shit. And so um, where people have been repressed and oppressed and stuff in past lives, the, this is your time to shine, to turn things around. Justice will be served so this is the time of balance and so you know this is really exciting times but man when i see how fragile these people are they're all on medications you know this pharmaceutical has got such control over them i mean they pull any of these things like oh my god and um i don't know how some of these are going to get over it how they're going to be convinced that there is biology, that there is men and women. And I mean, I don't know how far that they are have pushed back in their minds. Like, you know, it's like they've created some sort of psychosis through this programming. And I don't know how some of them, man, she's having, I'm going to have to go. She's having a really bad time. Um, I don't know how they're going to get over and be able to, um, uh, you know, they're going to have to go back and admit what they've done, you know, and uh, there's going to be, there's going to have to be some people who take responsibility for coming in. And I don't know if it's the teachers in the schools. I don't, I don't know. I, I, it's shocking when you hear these kids who actually think that we just made up biology so that we could call ourselves boys and girls. Like, it's in every fucking thing except worms. Worms, you don't need both. But in every other species that, of the ones that I know of that have been discovered, I'm sure there's some other ones that are not discovered. They're discovering new ones all the time. There's crazy shit going on. Like, uh, it's starting to become very clear that what this place is is not what we've been told. And there's portals all around and there's all sorts of shit. And they're doing everything they can to keep us poisoned and sick. I mean, I, yesterday I saw there was some disaster over by Tacoma. There's some sort of ships. You know, it's two chemicals. That's what they really love. You know, let's mix it up. And uh, so, and why in the world would you be moving chemicals that are so bad for each other together at all? I mean, it's on purpose. I mean, to fucking dig up all that toxic dirt, go drive a ways, and then dump it all out. That is not an accident. Like, it is mental. Like, all this stuff is being purposely done. So, anyways, you know, uh, it is, uh, things are going to just keep blowing up crazily. It, but you can see, like, what I'm saying, there's going to be people who have a hard time facing the truth. And, you know, when you're that fragile, uh, there's going to be a lot of uh, sad suicide shit, man. I, uh, you know, these, these people are losing their minds. I mean, they really don't see that these people, uh, like Dylan, is doing anything like that. Dylan is a fella who decided 367 days ago to become a girl. And now he's more girl than the rest of us. Like, you got to start seeing some flaws here. Like, the, this absurdity is to get you to question reality, to get you to ask some questions so that they can come in and help you figure it out. So, it's, um, you know, uh, but there's going to be a lot of people who are not going to like the answers that are coming in. And uh, it's going to be a lot of... Um, you can see there's gonna be a lot of violence there's gonna be a lot more is gonna be breaking out what are we on today's wednesday i think i'm so lost on days man everything really is just like and now i am even laying down in the middle of the day going to sleep like i'm trying to sleep like when she lays down and um plus just sleep through this time it's not like i can just take her out and she won't get in the car 
going out and walking very much with her. She has such a hard time walking right now. It's so fucking cold here. And I've run out of wood. I'm going to have to, I don't know why the wood guy has not come. I don't know if something's going on with him. I'm going to message him again today. Uh, there's a whole drama going on with our girl on her adventure. She got herself into some trouble and decided her they were going to go rob some, um, grab some alcohol liquor bottles, and steal them from a store. Let's run and steal them. And they got caught. And um, so my one daughter who is got her, you know, let her go. She's uh, freaking out. She's saying, you know, she's going to, she messaged me. I was already asleep. She messaged me. Will you please call Kayla? There's been arrested and we've got to talk, uh, you know, and so she's freaking out. And, um, so I messaged her, you know, when I got up and like, I was asleep <laughs> now it's three 30 in the morning and I'm messaging you, you want me to call now? <laughs> and, um, but I did message the girl and she was, uh, so she's not in jail and she does recognize that it was stupid and that she's not going to do that again. But, you know, when a kid makes mistakes, it gives you an opportunity to say a lot of good things. So, you know, I said a lot of good things. And I'm not going to judge her. Fuck, I was, God damn, at that age, I was a fucking criminal juvenile out. Oh, my God, I was something else. Like, I was out there. I was arrested all the time. And I think, you know, my, my dad was connected somehow. I don't even know. You know, sometimes... Um, I, he would just tell me I was in trouble and he would know about the stuff I had done. So I, I don't know. Um, but you know, the, um, I did, I did a lot of crazy, stupid shit. And so I'm sure the hell not going to judge some other 17 year old for doing crazy, stupid shit. I mean, that's kind of what that time is like. And that is why God, something's itching in my face here. It's fucking horrible. Uh, that is what the time is like. It's probably the neobots. And I'll probably start sneezing. They're waking up. <laughs> They're like, feed me. Um, <clears throat> uh, but the, um, when, you know, when I talk to her and I give her all of these other things to think about, it's still up to the person. Each person has light and dark in them. Each person has to decide which to follow. And, um, you know, you got to recognize the dark's going to keep you in chaos. You know, it's going to keep you uh, in problems. So following the light is always a better choice. But following the dark, you learn a lot of stuff. So there is, you know, there's a, a reason to do stupid shit sometimes because you learn. And so... Um, you know, to me, it seems like she did learn from what she did getting in trouble. And I told her, this is not the time to be doing stuff that you're going to interact with cops. Cops are mindless robots at this point. They are following orders. They, I mean, you could go up and start trying to tell them, hey, you know, I'm, I'm following God's law now. I'm not a part of your system anymore. They would have no idea what you're talking about. They would just rush you and think you're crazy and take you down for a 5150 or whatever the hell. They don't fucking, they, they do not understand about what's happening at all. They're just, you know, militant following orders and it's uh, violent in a lot of places. I mean, there's some that, you know, their heart's going to shine through and then we need those ones in the stations because that energy will go out and click something in to give the others some like a little compassion and stuff. Because the ones that she got, obviously, they didn't kick their ass. They didn't even arrest them. I think they got ticketed or something. And um, But they did talk to my daughter. My daughter said, I'm getting her a plane ticket now. She's on her way home. Like, and so, uh, you know, I don't know. There's consequences, though, when you do stupid shit. And that is what you got. We got to let kids learn. Yeah, there's consequences. You do stupid shit. There's consequences. And there's nobody who can take your consequences for you. So when you go do something that's stupid, you have to pay the piper. You can't put it off on somebody else. And that's what we need to start making kids understand. Because then when they understand that they are held for their own consequences, for their own choices, then and you got to allow kids to make some choices. My God, parents are whacked out. 
I, I, the one girl who I said that she's similar to me, only she is talking about the, um, all these parents who, um, uh, exploit their children for views and, uh, likes and stuff like that. And it is disturbing. Like when you hear her stuff that she says and her perspective and what she shows and stuff, it's like, Oh my God, these parents, like Instagram and Facebook is filled with them and just putting videos out where your kid just does stupid shit all the time. It's like, what if your parents did that to you? I mean, you can't even, most of these people can't even stand their parents, want nothing to do with their parents. Their parents sure the hell didn't do anything like that. We weren't out there just exposing every stupid ass thing you did. Every time you picked a booger and ate it, we weren't filming it for the whole goddamn nation to see. So, you know, the world has got to um, see their own sickness like they're participating in the world in a sick way, a toxic way. The world may give you that opportunity, but it's your choice. You make the choices. And you got all these people out here just exploiting their kids. And you got ones that exploit them, even putting them in swimming suits and all sorts of provocative pictures and stuff. And then these parents go in and converse with these pervy old dads that are in there talking. And that's why I said there is going to be a lot of people who are married to people who don't have any idea what these people do in their spare time. Because these dads and these husbands and stuff are coming from somewhere. They're coming from somebody's house. They're all over out there talking on these young girls' um, fucking pages, you know, and they're gross. Like you see a six-year-old in a swimming suit and you're, you know, you, you don't even know what all you want to do to that. Like, you're so excited. Like, mm -mm. no, I mean, you saw the look in the Dalai Lama's eyes when he got up close. Like, that is what these people are like. Like, they're all horned up on little kids or something. It's like sick. It's like so sick. And I, I don't get it. Like, I, I swear, I have a little higher standard for a lover. <laughs> it's not, it's not, yeah, mm -mm, no, I'm, I'm, I'm disturbed by certain behaviors that some of these people exhibit is, uh, oof, creepy. So, um, anyways, uh, still is still going to keep being very uncomfortable, but you know, any of the people, I, I know a lot of people have people in their families or associated or whatever. I'm telling you, this is not the time for any, I told you those or beating anybody down. Just, you know, talk logically about what you know. Don't like I, these people are coming in my account. I'm not hunting any of them down. Even when I see, because now I've got so many videos coming up like that guy talking so wacky. And I wanted to go in and say something it's like, fuck, I can't stand it when people do that to me. I'm not going to go in and say some gnarly shit to them. Like, you dude, you, you know, that's not right. Like, it doesn't matter what I think. It matters what he thinks. He, it's his thing to go through, and it's being done in a very public way. And how it plays out, none of us know. None of us know how any of this is going to play out. And so much of it is going to be public. And you're going to see a lot of people who have been so mind controlled and so mis um, information. Like they want to tell us that we're going out misinformation, talking about stuff, but uh, these things, the misinformation is telling kids that fucking biology doesn't exist. And there are any of us that think it does that we are the problem in this world. That's, that's an issue And uh, getting these kids to come back from that. Like, um, you know, kids have no respect for older people and they don't understand you're pushing away the logic and history that can help you when you go in and listen to old people and you have a deeper understanding of what has happened. You know, otherwise you're just being misled by historians that are lying to you to control and manipulate you. And then you can see why, because of what division that they can create. Like, it's, it's crazy. And how many of these kids, because they're losing their minds. They're coming in, they're going in and it's just attacking people right and left and going crazy. And there's going to be more violent attacks in the physical, for sure. Because they have no, they have no regulating. 
they they don't know how to talk themselves down they are, they are just uh, it's like they're shorting out and it's going to be dangerous in a lot of places you know and i've seen so many more people saying get the hell out of the cities it is going to be very very dangerous in the big cities it's going to get worse and worse and worse and um you know, and these people who where all of their, everything that they believe is falling apart and they don't know what to do. There's nothing in them. They don't even, a lot of them don't even realize they have a soul. They don't know anything about spiritual. Oh yeah. And out here it has been crazy. I'll say this real quick before I go. No, I am not even shitting you like one plane after another, like where it sounds like, fuck, this sounds serious. And I'm at the border of Canada. And, um, and yesterday there was explosions. I just kept on just painting. I was like, okay, just keep calm. Just don't even think about it. And it was like, if there's one that is bad enough that you have to run and you will hear, I kept on expecting that my neighbor was going to be like, didn't you hear that? We got to go because I'm not on any of these social medias out here too. I was kicked off. I don't know what the hell is going on out here. And that's why the one neighbor is always telling me, but I feel like she's going to, you know, come at me like, you know, we got to go. We're being, um, you know, we got to hurry and uh, leave. I mean, they're already over by Tacoma. If that spill goes down, uh, with these toxic chemicals is what they're going to keep doing it and doing it. And then they'll have us convinced like, well, it's that spill is dangerous as they're spraying more shit on us. And we're focused on that and they're just dropping it right over our heads. So it is, um, you know, it's a game. It's all fucking game. And uh, they are you know, going to keep playing as long as they can. And Soros, you know, he's going to run like that. This stuff is so fucking absurd. God damn, this shit is absurd. Uh, and the money thing and all the people freaking out and the Fed now and stuff like that. I saw guys saying, well, the rest of us are going to be on this. Sorry, they can be on the Fed now. And that's the way I feel about it. They can try and do their Fed now for them. But when this all switches, and I know that's why they're dragging it so long, is because the quantum is already set up. When they drop off this one thing, it automatically is going to go quantum. And so they are trying to repress that. I don't know what, what all in what um, stage that anything is, but that it's all just a game right now. So, you know, the, it's all just to get more people talking and get more people to understand and to see. And then when the money thing is pulled out from under people, more people will recognize what's going on because when people start going who have no clue which there's so many and they go and try and use their card and they try and go get cash and you know and they have no substance i mean the smallest thing has them in tears in their car a cashier could have said you know ma'am instead of sir and they all fucking sit in their car for two hours crying about it like uh the they don't have any real identity that, you know, they they still are putting it all out there. Somebody show me, somebody tell me, who am I, what am I? And anything that doesn't align with them, then they short out. It's like, you got to go with how you align what is inside of you. It doesn't matter what anybody else thinks in the world of you. It only matters what you feel. And if you feel, you got to be strong enough to show yourself. Just be you. And don't worry about if everybody doesn't understand you, if everybody doesn't like you or whatever. And really be rational in your thinking and realize, like, I'm never going to cross paths with this person. I'm never going to see this person. You know, maybe this person rang me out at the grocery store, but I'm sure not going out to dinner with them. Who cares if they don't know if I'm a boy or a girl? It doesn't matter. Who cares if they think different than you think? It doesn't matter. This is where people have got to stop with this trying to control others by who they are and how they think. We're allowed that. And we've all got to get to this point of just being comfortable, being ourselves and not being liked by everybody. It doesn't matter. We don't have to be liked by everybody. But anyways, now she's up and going again. I'm going to have to figure out what this day will be like so anyways um you know stay stay saw stay true to yourself 
You know, that's the biggest thing. Just work on you and stay true to yourself and stay out of the crowds and stay away from the people who are going to be falling apart because they really, you know, I mean, at this point, you say the wrong thing to somebody and there's no telling what their react reaction will be. I mean, they're fragile. And so, yeah, don't go out and try and, you know, use this time. It's one thing on social media to say something and let the universe bring it across their page and then have them come in and melt down on you. It's another thing to be confrontational. So don't be confrontational. You know, just realize that you're right. There is biology. There is a reason why there's boys and girls. And it's all due to procreation. It's in every species. And that that is a part of what this planet does in order to keep going. And each species to keep going. And, of course, they are going to disrupt that because they want to control the um control all the species they want to kill them all off and control them and make them in labs and so anyways but you gotta you know see a lot of stuff to understand that and then they're nowhere near that and they are so smart they can't imagine anyone could have ever manipulated them so anyways i'm just going to see how it all plays out it's not going to be all um, fucking fairy dust i'll tell you that so Stay strong and stay safe, and I'll talk to you later. Bye.